Hey there, people. So today I am bringing you my Terraria 1.4.3 Deer Clops boss fight guide. This is the Don't Starve Together crossover boss, part of the new content update for the crossover event. This is a detailed guide to the boss fight, including how to summon it, preparations, gear, accessories, strategies, drops, everything that you'll need to know, your arena, setup to be able to take on this boss. It's suitable for all difficulty levels, classic, also known as normal, expert, and master mode. I'll also take a little moment to talk about the new Magiluminescence accessory and how to craft that because it's amazing and useful for the fight. I will be going into a lot of detail, so check the timestamps in the description, the chapters to skip ahead. I will first talk about the boss itself, then how to spawn it, um, arenas and strategies, armor and weapons, accessories, buffs, and then finally I'll show you the actual boss fight and I'll talk about drops at the end. Uh, even on master mode, some of this stuff might be overkill, but I'll give you all the options that you need so that you can decide uh, what you need. So first of all, about the deer clops. Deer clops is a large bipedal creature with horns like a deer and one large eye. This boss was added as part of the Terraria 1.4.3 Don't Starve Together crossover update along with the constant world seed and a bunch of new items. Uh, but you can fight it in any world, not just in the constant worlds. Uh, you can actually run between the deer clops' legs without taking direct damage, which is very different than most bosses. It has quite a lot of health, which scales much higher on the higher difficulties. It is a pre-hard mode boss. Um, before the Wall of Flesh, you can take it on. But um, on Expert and Master mode, it actually has more health than the Wall of Flesh, which is kind of interesting. Despite such high health, according to the wiki at least, it has zero defense, which means you have many options to damage it. So despite the high health, um, it is only immune to the confused debuff. You can hit it with any damage boost, debuffs, and so on as well. Uh, it has four different attacks in classic or normal mode, uh, five attacks in expert and master mode. It has a ground smash, which creates a wave of ice spikes uh, twice usually in one direction and third time it will spread out in both directions. When you're a little farther away from the boss, it will scoop the ground and throw chunks of snow into the air. Uh, once in a while, actually I think it depends on the terrain, what exactly it throws into the air. Um, there are variations on what it looks like. Once in a while it will stand and roar, which inflicts this slow debuff on you, slows you down, makes it hard to get away. If you're above it for very long, it will summon a swarm of five shadow hands to attack you, so you don't want to hang out above it too much. In expert and master mode from time to time, it will also summon just one shadow hand at a time uh, near you, uh, no matter what you're doing, <laughs> and uh, that will swipe at you or circle or whatever. There's a few different patterns to it. The deer clops will also turn purple if it's too far from you, uh, if you get too far away, at which point if when it's purple it's invincible, you can't damage it. So you do need to stay fairly close to the deer clops in order to damage it successfully. It's arguably one of the strongest pre-hard mode bosses in terms of stats, but it is very beatable. Um, again, low defense, um, there's strategies around dodging it and so on, I'll get to that. Uh, unlike many bosses, it does not immediately despawn if you die, but rather it will actually stay and wander around for a while. So uh, if you get back to it within a reasonable amount of time, you can actually continue the fight even if you die. You can set a spawn point nearby in a relatively protected area so that you won't be killed again immediately. Uh, if you do that before you start the fight, then if the boss kills you, you can come back and just keep fighting if you want to do that. Um, so it is possible to come back and finish the fight. You can even keep a nurse nearby at your spawn. Um, maybe, for instance, a house uh, up in the air with the nurse in a bed, and you can spawn there and just drop back in. One idea. Um, the deer clops can travel through blocks, which is why I said a house in the air. So uh, you don't want it to stick around in tight areas or near uh, NPCs too long, uh, places that it can travel. So uh, it will pass through. So an underground house may be not such a great idea because it will actually go right through the ground to come and get you. Um, whereas up in the air, um, I don't think it can fly. <laughs> anyway, next up, spawning. So deer clops will naturally spawn in the snow biome if there's a blizzard at exactly midnight. This can happen anytime after at least one player, if you're playing multiplayer uh, or just yourself, uh, has nine defense or 200 health. So you meet certain requirements and it's a blizzard and it's midnight, deer clops will spawn. 
Um, it can also be spawned manually using a deer thing. The item is called at any time of the day, but only in the snow biome. Uh, so a deer thing is crafted from three flinx fur and one lens, plus five demonite or crimtain ore at a crimson or demon altar. Sorry, I just had a blood moon going on in the background. I do record these over gameplay. So uh, it will be much easier to craft the summoning item than to wait around for those specific unusual conditions to occur. There is no prerequisite to summon it manually, so you can fight it at any point in the game. When the deer clops does spawn, it will spawn somewhere in the snow biome. It may not necessarily be near you right away. Uh, it will only spawn in the snow biome, but you can fight it anywhere. It will follow you out of the snow biome. Uh, I recommend that you fight it during the daytime. So next up is arena and strategies. A nice simple strategy is to have a row of platforms up off the ground higher than you can jump. Uh, basically, uh, you want those platforms to be up higher than the boss is tall, ideally, I would suggest, uh, and with stairs so that uh, both you and the boss actually will climb stairs. Uh, so if you set up some stairs, you can actually get it to follow you up those stairs onto the platform. And if you keep it off the ground, it will not attack you quite as often um, with those things, you know, digging in the ground and spreading uh, ice along. It will still do those sometimes, I found, but uh, it does it a lot less. So it helps quite a lot to get it to come up onto some non-solid blocks, uh, platforms off the ground. You can add a campfire, a heart lantern, uh, star in a bottle, one or more of any of those. Uh, star in a bottle if you're using magic weapons. You can also add sunflowers for speed. Um, you know, obviously need some grass there, but uh, if you want to take it a little bit further, you can also use a bast statue, a garden gnome, one or more garden gnomes, and a honey pool that you can dip in occasionally for the regeneration boost. Those will all help. The wiki recommends waiting until after you defeat Skeletron to get better gear, but I found it is very possible to beat it before that. I did it myself the first try. Uh, with the right arena, the right gear, the right boosts, you can totally do it before Skeletron. Although if you're struggling with it, certainly you can take on Skeletron first and, and use the better gear to do better, and I'll talk about all that. It's a very good idea to gather and use as many life crystals as possible before taking on this fight. Ideally, you want to get to the maximum 400 health that you can get at this point in the game. Um, so next up, let's talk about armor. For ore-based armor, gold or platinum is recommended. I actually did take this on with gold armor. Uh, you can use Spelunker potions to help you find enough gold or platinum if you want to go that, go that route. Um, it would be possible even with lower tier armor, but it would require a very good arena and very good dodging. Again, you can always you can take it on with multiple uh, tries as well, so worst case. Uh, crimson armor is also a very great um, non-class specific choice. If you're in a crimson world, you can make your crimson armor, and that'll work beautifully. It can be better to specialize for a class at this point, or maybe you're doing a class-based playthrough. So ranged players can manage this fight probably with fossil armor. It's kind of tough to get fossil armor anyway, but uh, you could probably manage it. It's pretty low defense, but it'll work. Um, if you've defeated Skeletron as a ranged player, you'll want the necro armor. That's much better. Melee players will want to either use shadow armor if you're in a corruption world for speed, or you can use Molten Armor regardless. Uh, Molten has higher attack and defense stats. Summoners may want to defeat the Queen Bee first to get the Bee Armor, or alternatively, you can also use the Obsidian Armor, which is more whip focused. Uh, one less minion, but higher whip boost. So either one will work, Bee Armor or Obsidian Armor for summoners. Mages can either use a higher end gem robe, like the Diamond Robe particularly, and a Magic Hat or the Wizard Hat. Um, you can use that combo, or you can use jungle armor, or you can use meteor armor. Any of those will work. I did actually try taking it on um, with a gem robe and magic hat, and it, it's quite possible. It's tough, uh, tougher, but it's, uh, it's quite possible. Um, actually, those do have higher boosts with the right combinations, uh, just lower defense, which is the only thing that makes it harder so um, if you are going to use a gem robe and either of the hats that go with it use jungle armor uh, pants or or meteor pants either jungle or meteor pants will give you some extra bonuses and defense to go with the robe and the hat 
So in terms of weapons, the easiest recommend recommendation that I've come up with is to use the bees. <laughs> Just like Skeletron and the Wall of Flesh, bees are very powerful against this boss. Uh, I would the easiest option there is the bee's knees bow with wooden arrows. Uh, if you are a magic user, you can use the bee gun. Uh, bee nades also help. And the star cannon is a very powerful option as well. So general recommendations, uh, those would be some of my go-tos. In terms of specific class weapons, though, ranged weapons, again, I do highly recommend the bee's knees with wooden arrows. It's a great option. It's available before Skeletron. You could also, uh, after Skeletron, you can get the Hellwing bow. It might be stronger yet than the bee's knees. Um, even pre-Skeletron, though, you can go to the Underworld. You can get the Molten Fury. It should be quite workable as well. You could even get away with a demon or tendon bow with frostburn arrows if you can dodge well. It's going to be harder to do enough damage with those, but it is possible. Uh, guns can also work well. Don't forget to use silver or tungsten bullets for the extra damage boost that those types of bullets will give you. Uh, even the musket or likely the mini shark might be a little better than the musket. Either one can do the job if you're very good at aiming and dodging. So again, you can take this on earlier if you're good enough. Um, a little later on though, if you've beaten Skeletron, you can use the quad barrel shotgun or the Phoenix Blaster. Those will be much better, more powerful options. Again, Star Cannon, very powerful. It is a ranged weapon if you can get enough stars to use it. Uh, you can't even hit it with thrown weapons. All the formerly throwing weapons are now counted as ranged anyway. So uh, some options there include poison knives spiky balls molotov cocktails bone javelins you could even try grenades if you're careful any of those will work for range players as well for melee weapons uh, you probably don't want to get quite close enough for most of the swords but some of the larger swords like the blade of grass the fiery great sword or ideally the knight's edge uh, those should be workable you could technically probably try to do this with the enchanted sword because it's got a projectile that would be like a minimum level for this i would say um it's going to be pretty pretty tough because of the low damage the star fury would be a little bit better um if you can aim those stars well at the deer clops and again either of those you're going to need to be really good at dodging to take this on yo-yos will be a nice option in general uh the malaise the artery or the amazon uh, particularly the Amazon would be the go-to pre-Skeletron or after defeating Skeletron you can get the Code 1, the Valor or even better the Cascade. The Cascade would do a great job against this. Um, the Dark Lance also post-Skeletron is, is basically the only spear option I would probably consider in pre-hard mode. Uh, if you can obtain it that's post-Skeletron from a chest in uh, the Underworld. Uh, the Thorn Chakram, you can get that early on, and it's pretty powerful. You could you could certainly manage this fight with that. The Combat Wrench, the Flamerang, the Blue Moon, and the Sun Fury, those are all a little bit later. Um, any of those would work as well. In terms of summoner weapons, at a minimum, you would want the Snap Thorn Whip because its poison debuff will be helpful. It's more powerful than the Leather Whip, so Snap Thorn Whip can do the job. Um, it's better to defeat Skeletron to get the Spinal Tap for the higher impact damage, especially if you're using Obsidian Armor, but you can get away with the Snap Thorn. Uh, you'll want to use a Flask of Fire in either case, whichever of those whips you're using to increase the damage output. In terms of summoning staffs, uh, the Vampire Frog Staff is a good option for this fight because it is ground-based, the boss is ground-based, the Vampire Frogs are ground-based. They're actually pretty quick to attack, so it's a good option here. Uh, the Hornet Staff can also work. It does have a poison debuff, so that'll give you some extra damage as well. The Imp Staff can also work. The rate of fire is a bit low, but uh, it does inflict on fire. It's fairly powerful. So uh, you can use the Imp Staff. If you are doing that, switch to a Flask of Poison. You want to, um, if one of them is doing poison, you want the fire. If it's doing fire, you want the poison. Then you can inflict both of those. They will damage the boss. Um, this fight is possible. I actually tested it with the new Abigail's Flower Ghost. Uh, it's possible, but it's a lot harder. I wouldn't recommend that option, but you could do it if you really want to. You could even use earlier minions. It's just going to be a lot harder. I did die a couple times trying that, um, but in the end, I did manage it. If you have a sentry from the Old Ones Army event, uh, it certainly doesn't hurt to use it. Throw that in there and get some extra damage that way. In terms of magic weapons, again, the B gun is a great option that's available before defeating Skeletron. 
a gem staff like the diamond ruby or amber staff those are weak but still viable if you can dodge well i tested that as well <laughs> the vile thorn is a good option since you're often fighting it close up anyway uh, the space gun or the gray zapinator can work particularly if you combine them with meteor armor because then there's no mana cost you can just keep firing if you do defeat Skeletron first, um, and or if you venture to the Underworld, you'll have a lot more powerful options. I actually did this pre-Skeletron, pre-Underworld, and I'll show you that. Um, but if you do defeat Skeletron and or go to the Underworld, you can get uh, from the dungeon, you can get Magic Missile, Aqua Scepter, the Water Bolt, and from Skeletron himself, the Book of Skulls. So those will all work nicely. Uh, from the underworld, you're going to mostly need the shadow key to get the shadow chest from the dungeon. Um, so if you go to the underworld, use your shadow key, you can get the flower of fire, the flame lash, the demon scythe. Those are all good options. Uh, demon scythe, you actually don't need the shadow key. So technically you could do that sooner. It's going to be tough, but you could do it. Um, so those are all good uh, magic options. And this is where I wanted to talk about the Magiluminescence. So the Magiluminescence is an awesome, awesome, highly recommended new accessory. You can technically get it quite early in the game, even before defeating any bosses, you can potentially get this. Uh, it gives you a major 20% speed boost, plus doubles your rate of acceleration and deceleration. It also emits light constantly, similar to a shine potion, so that becomes super useful. It makes it much easier quicker and easier to explore at night and in the underground areas in caves. You don't need to stop and place torches all the time. You don't need to switch and hold torches. Uh, so Magiluminescence is amazing. Um, I find it's this is a, an accessory that you really want as early as you can possibly get it. It's even more useful in the new constant world seed that it's introduced along with, uh, since you can be damaged in darkness in the constant, but this produces light so you don't get damaged. Um, it is crafted from 5 topaz gems and 12 demonite or crimtane bars at an anvil. It is uh, going to be a little tough to just gather that much demonite or crimtane. It is possible to gather it underground with bombs, uh, gold, platinum, fossil, bone, uh, pickaxe, any of those will do it, or a reaver shark. Um, so it is possible to get that just underground, but it's uh, going to be hard to get enough that way. So the alternative is to get it by defeating the Eye of Cthulhu, which will drop a whole bunch of Demonite or Crimtane, depending which type of world you're in, and uh, that'll give you enough to get the Magiluminescence. I would definitely recommend that you get this item ASAP and equip it for this fight, uh, because it does give you that speed boost, and speed is super important because the boss uh, slows you down with some of his attacks. So let me actually just show you that quickly. So here we are in my, uh, this is a constant world seed, the constant, uh, which I use for one of my other videos as well. And you can see when I'm walking around with the Magiluminescence, I just have that light on and you can see how fast I'm going. That's not just that. Um, and because it is the constant, I need to eat. There we go. <laughs> but you can see how fast I am. And even if I unequip some of my other stuff, I'm still gonna be pretty fast. And yes, there is a blood moon. I wasn't kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, you can see, like, this is just normal walking speed with the Magiluminescence. And I've got that light. I can explore around at night. I can explore underground. I don't need to stop and place torches all the time. I don't need to worry about getting hurt in the constant here. But if I unequip that... I just put it in my vanity so it still shows on my face, but... You can see I'm much, much slower. I'm going to have trouble. Um, if it weren't a blood moon, actually, I would be getting hurt in this particular world. So just wanted to show you that quickly. It's super useful, and I've actually set my spawn in uh, the snow biome because I'm going to take on that fight, but wanted to show you that. Okay, so next up is accessories. The key for this fight is mobility, both vertically and horizontally. So helpful accessories include a cloud, sandstorm, blizzard, tsunami in a bottle, any one of those, or better yet, a balloon in a bottle. Um, any of those items combined with a red balloon will be uh, the best option there. Band of regeneration, fast running or jumping boots like the frost spark or ideally the amphibian boots, uh, fledgling wings and or a red balloon or its derivatives that I just mentioned will also help to great or help greatly with dodging. Uh, again, that magiluminescence is an amazingly useful new accessory and perfect for this fight. 
if you're playing expert or master mode, the Shield of Cthulhu is great for jump dashing over top of the boss. Uh, the Worm Scarf or the Brain of Confusion are highly recommended as well, bordering on essential if you are in expert or master mode. If you're lucky enough to have a hand warmer, uh, this fight is the perfect moment to use it because it's going to counteract some of the boss's cold effects. Uh, and Christmas is coming, so <laughs> you've got your, your chance to get that as well. Summoners uh, should now buy and use the Pygmy Necklace by this point in the game. Uh, it has been changed so you can get it earlier in the game. That's going to help you a lot with an extra minion. Uh, Magma Stone will be helpful for melee users. Uh, Feral Claws are definitely useful for melee players and summoners that are using whips. Uh, it's unclear actually whether the Shark Tooth Necklace or the Stinger Necklace will help you in this fight. Um, Again, Wiki says that the boss has no defense, and yet the Wiki turns around and says that you should use that item. So I don't know how that makes sense. I haven't tested the Shark Tooth Necklace, whether it uh, helps with damage or not in this fight. Maybe, maybe not. Ideally, you want to reforge your accessories to get a wording modifier for extra defense. You can even go with armored if you want to save a little money and you happen to get that. Uh, menacing or lucky can also help alternatively to boost damage output and to end the fight more quickly. The slime mount can actually be quite useful uh, for this fight due to its quick high jumps and its bounce attack. Uh, you should be able to, I, again, didn't quite test this, even though I do have the slime amount, you should be able to bounce off its head um, because the slime amount uh, protects you from below and lets you bounce off things. Uh, with the slime mount, you can even quickly de-equip it, dash with the shield of Cthulhu and then re-equip it um, if you have the mount unmount shortcut uh, at your disposal. You can use that little technique to be able to dodge while also using the slime mount. But moving on, buffs. Uh, the buffs from the slice of cake, which is possible to get by this point, the sharpening station, the ammo box, and the bewitching table can also help. Um, depending on your class, those will help more or less. Sharpening station for melee, ammo box for ranged, bewitching table for summoners, although an extra minion doesn't hurt anybody else either, right? Uh, food and buff potions will also certainly help, such as the iron skin potion, regeneration, swiftness potions. Those are your basics, and there are a bunch more you can also use. Of course, you should have health potions by this point. You should have full health potions rather than lesser health potions before you try to take on this fight. Uh, honey fin are even better. You can go fishing in honey and get your honey fin. Uh, warmth potions will actually help to reduce the damage of those cold attacks as well. Summoners should use summoning potions, ideally, if you don't mind fishing in the underground jungle. <laughs> um, those using bows should use archery potions. Magic users should use magic power and mana regeneration potions. Melee and whip users should use flasks. Uh, melee can also optionally use ale or sake um, to give you a little boost there as well. There are some great additional options like uh, the Rage or Wrath potions, Endurance potions, and so on. Check out my Potions and Flask guide for full details on all the things available there and for ref recipes for the buff potions and more. Uh, if you're an expert in Master Mode, you will definitely need some kind of food for the well-fed buff. Um, ideally, you want the highest tier, the ones that give you a major boost. Food does, whether you're an expert or master or not, um, food does help you to move faster, regenerate your health faster and more. It gives you some nice stat boosts. It's also, as I sort of briefly demonstrated there, it's necessary if you are playing in a uh, world with the constant world seed. So, um, yeah, you've been hearing the sounds of the zombies all night and I am just uh, going to get to the actual fight because it's almost done. Okay, so here we are in the snow biome, and this is what I was talking about in terms of what I set up as an arena, and I found this very effective. Um, stairs up at the ends, and just a nice little um, platform. I've got my campfires and heart lanterns, and the other end I've got the same idea here. Don't want to go in the water in the snow biome because it's cold and it'll slow you down. Uh, I did do this, and this is basically the same setup I used on my first attempt at this. So I've got gold armor. Nice and simple, uh, worm scarf. I did swap in, I, originally I didn't have amphibian boots, I just had Hermes boots, so it's doable with those two. Um, I've got fledgling wings, shield of Cthulhu, magiluminescence, um, and just an armored uh, band of regeneration. So uh, I, I didn't even like try to do all of these warding. I just uh, went with anything that was a plus three or four percent uh, damage or crit and uh, plus three or four 
um, points of defense. Any of those were enough for me. So I went with that. And let's, uh, without further ado, get this set up. Have my food, have my potions, summon the boss. And here he comes. And yeah, he doesn't spawn like right next to you, but you can see he walks through blocks. He's purple because he's farther away from me. And what I want to do is, is be close enough that he's not invincible. <laughs> Gotta watch those hands. This is master mode. This is where you use that shield of Cthulhu, jump and dodge over his head, try to get him up here so that he's not attacking you quite as badly. He's actually going kind of worse. <laughs> Gotta watch for the ice, gotta watch for the claws. But you just wanna stay like just a little bit ahead of him so that he can't get you. Those bees do good work. Watch those hands. Dodge over top, and you can see the, the attacks are definitely less frequent, but they do still happen when I'm up here. So I've almost got my heal. I did not put my nurse nearby, I probably should have. <laughs> I'm also counting on all my regeneration boosts to help keep my health from going too low. See, I'm actually recovering my health finally. I was really worried about that. I don't want to embarrass myself in front of all of you. I did do this first try with essentially this setup. Oh, and there's the one. Yeah, see, now he's inflicted the slow with the scream. But he's not that fast, so it's fine. Because I've got all these accessories, and that was the idea of the magic luminescence and the boots. So that even when he does that, and I've got the slow debuff, I'm still fast enough to stay ahead of him. And I really only, like, most of the time I don't even have to try. I can actually outrun him very easily, but then he'll turn invincible, so I don't want that. And there you go. He's dead. Just like that. Now, that gives me all the drops, but I want to do this even with, uh, I want to show you that you can even do this with um, a gem robe and magic hat. I just uh, grabbed that equipment as well, so I'll show you that one sec. Okay, so here we go. I've got just a magic hat, diamond robe, jungle pants, um, otherwise same gear down here, and I just brought my magic potions because those are obviously going to help. So let's apply those, and that's why I brought another one of these. Oops. Where did I put that? Here we go. <laughs> I switched my uh, mouse buttons recently. It's messed me up a bit. <laughs> so here we go. He's coming again through the dirt. This is just a ruby staff. I mean, this is like early game kind of stuff. Granted, you might, might not go down to the jungle like right away, but to get those jungle pants. You can also go with meteor pants, those would be a good option. I went in the water, so that's <laughs> I told you, don't go in the frozen water. But you can see, I can totally do this. It's going to take forever, though. I might cut ahead a little. <laughs> Finally died. I had a bunch of close calls there. But as promised, you can come back and fight him, and as promised, you should not ideally have your spawn point underground. <laughs> we can do it. We can do it. 
he really is just uh, staying in the groove of that whole dodging routine and watching out for the various attacks, including those hands and the ice and whatnot. I don't get stuck in the water. I had a terrible time when I did that. We kind of want to show you maybe the... Uh, on one hand, I want to show you when he summons a bunch of hands above him because you're above him. On the other hand, I don't want to die again. <laughs> ah, speaking of which. Yeah, this is not how you want to set up your spawn. The worst thing is when you get stuck. There's those hands above him. <laughs> so, uh, ah, it's both good and bad that I got above him. I managed to get out, but at what cost? <laughs> so when I was staying in my nice little groove of dodging, it was working really well. And also the other thing is you want to obviously have your buff potions applied. I didn't want to really apply them until I was out in the clear here, but... You really gotta watch the uh, the hands and the attacks. If you can stay in the groove of dodging, this is totally possible. I actually was doing really well at not dying <laughs> for quite a while. I was doing really well. The beginning of the fight, I was actually doing better uh, than the first fight I fight I showed you. <laughs> So, there we go. Finally beat him. Uh, did take a few deaths doing it that way, but as you can see, you can continue that fight no matter how many times you die if you're uh, so prepared. Uh, if I had taken my own advice <laughs> and put a house up in the air with the nurse, that would have gone a lot better. Um, for a long time, as long as I was staying in that groove of just dodging uh, appropriately, that actually was going quite well. Uh, it's only when... I died and then got stuck underground and then couldn't get out. You know, you don't want to put yourself in those kind of situations. So I do recommend um, with this particular boss, he can climb down, but he can't fly. So uh, put a house up in the air. You probably would have the issue of the hands, shadow hands above you. Um, worst case though, or ideally you don't want to die like that at all. Just stay in that groove, learn the patterns. And if you can do that, you can take it on with uh, much earlier game equipment. But without further ado, Let's move on to the drops. So, drops. Um, I'm going to tell you about the drops and then I'll show you what I got on those two fights. And I'll also demonstrate most of the drops which I already got. So, the Deer Clops does not, unlike most bosses, does not drop healing potions. And in fact, has no guaranteed drops in classic or normal difficulty. Um, you are likely to... well. That, that's actually a good question because there's one thing that's unclear. I'll get to that. Uh, it has a 1 in 3 chance of dropping the eye bone pet summoning item, which summons the Chester pet, uh, which is an awesome pet that gives you automatic access to your piggy bank at all times. It's like a much better money trough in that you don't have to like resummon it all the time. It's just a pet that follows you uh, and you can open it up as if it's your piggy bank or money trough. Um, there's also a one in three chance of it dropping the eyebrella, which is a vanity item that summons a rain cloud above your head. There's also a one in three chance of it dropping the radio thing, it's called, <laughs> radio thing, uh, which either adds or removes the constant screen, of screen effects. So if you're in the constant, it removes the screen effect. If you're in a normal word, it world it adds the constant scream of effects the the coloration it's like a sepia tone and so on there's a, there's a few different effects depending um there's also a one in four chance each of four other drops only one will drop at a time you will not get more than one of these at a time the the thing i'm unclear of is if you always get one of these i think maybe you do wiki's not clear on that i have already gotten uh three of them so um three of them in three different fights so that's pretty good luck so i think you automatically always get one of these uh the pumatic horn is the first one it's a gun which consumes bullets but fires various random items that are affected by gravity uh, in return for those bullets uh, the weather pane a magic weapon which summons a hurt nato um so it's like a little tornado that will actually home in on enemies and um 
just get rid of those zombies. <laughs> and uh, it will repeatedly damage them. It's sort of like it latches onto them, but really it homes in and just hits them repeatedly. The Houndius Shootius, which is a sentry summon weapon, uh, which once placed fires projectiles like so many sentries do and lucy the axe a nice looking and powerful axe that displays various amusing dialogue lines when you're using it and doing various things with it there's also a one in ten chance that the deer clops will drop the deer clops trophy a one in seven chance to drop the deer clops mask on expert and master mode it will always drop the expert treasure bag which always contains the bone helm accessory the bone helm when you equip it summons those shadow hands that he likes to attack you with and he attacked me with so effectively in that second fight um, those will be summoned automatically to damage enemies so you'll have your own shadow hands to damage your enemies instead most of those other items that I mentioned will be found in the treasure bag instead of being dropped directly if you're in expert or master mode. The treasure bag will also always contain 10 gold coins, which is nice. On master mode only, you will always get the deer clops relic, plus you'll have a 1 in 4 chance to get the deer clops eyeball pet item, which summons a miniature deer clops. So, this is where I went, down into my cave hole. Um, but let's go back up here, see what I got this time. I did not yet get the pet, so let's find out what I got here. Oh, nice. I got the eyeball, and that was the one that I really wanted to show, um, but had not gotten yet. So, now do I have to, like, cancel my worm before that one's going to show? Let's find out. Yes, I do. apparently I do. So, this is your Chester pet item which is the one thing that i didn't have that i really wanted <laughs> um so i can use my money trough which i was lucky enough to get already as well which is a piggy bank or i can use a piggy bank or i can just have my chester and he's just gonna follow me around and i don't have to summon him at all and <laughs> that's a nice sound effect <laughs> And you can see it's the same items. It's your piggy bank. It's just access to your piggy bank and a pet at the same time. So that's great. Um, and let's see, what else did I get? Well, yeah, the weather pane. I think, no, I did I did actually get one of these already, but does it kill bunnies? It does kill bunnies. <laughs> it's a magic item, technically. You can see it just kind of flies away. I'm going to zoom out again here so we can find and uh, hopefully murder some enemies with some of these things. Wow, now I don't have the enemies, right? Uh, anyway, um, let's equip the Bone Helm because I got that too. So if we do have enemies, they're going to get murdered by that anyway. Um, I've got the Relic. Let's see how that looks when we place it here. Deer Clops, very nice. Oh, yeah, there's a... Uh, there's the shadow hands. Hurting the demon eyes, which I hate so much anyway. And if I bring out the tornado, that is also nice. That's very nice, actually. Now let's just uh, zoom back to... Yeah, I, I set that there, so I need to reset my spawn point. But anyway, um, I also have some things in my piggy bank. But first, let's open this one. Oh, yeah, I got a pneumatic horn. I did already have one of these as well. And it's hard to see, a little harder to see it at night, but it fires random various things, <laughs> which is fairly amusing. I guess I need to place some more torches so I can demonstrate better. Um, but yeah, you can kill bunnies with it. Might be a little hard to aim. It does varying amounts of damage because it's firing various things. So that's kind of neat. Uh, Chester's actually got some of the things that I had previously. How close are we to? Yeah, we're pretty close to dawn. So I'll show you the radio thing afterwards, maybe. Um, actually, let's just equip it. Yeah, you can see even night. It's a big difference. So it, the world is much more of like gray and sepia sort of a thing. Um, and this is what it would normally look like. So it's a huge difference, actually. It is almost dawn, so uh, we're greening up. Yeah, the radio thing is interesting because I've gotten so used to the constant, uh, you know, sepia gray world like this. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's interesting for me now because it's, it's like I've been playing that way for so long. Anyway, uh, here's Lucy the Axe. If I chop down trees, she says, let's things. 
or various things. Gets very excited about chopping trees. Less excited if you put her away in a chest or something. Um, now this is a vanity, so you can see that swapped in place of my hat, and it gives you a rain cloud. If you're not wearing the other thing, then it looks like an umbrella. But yeah, you can wear those both at the same time as well. So that's, I don't know, whatever. And let's see, the houndiest shootiest. It's a sentry. This is not the best place uh, to demonstrate a sentry now that it's daytime. Houndiest shootiest. Attack. It's totally missing that. We'll have better luck now that it's on the ground. Yes, good. Yeah, not like super effective. I mean, it's moderately powerful, but aim isn't perfect. <laughs> anyway, it is pretty hard mode, so to have a sentry summon at all is, is kind of special. And let's see, is there anything else that I didn't uh, demonstrate? Yeah, no, I guess that's about it. Um, except for the pet item. I didn't get the pet item still. The other pet item. I got this pet item, which is the better one anyway, but I did not get the eyeball, so that's unfortunate. Anyway, um, that's about it, I guess. So, I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.